Bobby's ready. Go! Job is spoken. This island is pretty much full of only two things. Snakes and rats. The big dead grandmother could easily go down as the dirtiest thing ever to be done in this game. I am the king and I am back. But I've got the million dollar check written already. I mean, I'm, I'm the winner. The winner of the first survivor competition is Rich. Direct from Hobart, it's now time for the only dedicated radio show in Australia devoted to the hit TV show Survivor, bringing you the latest news and the biggest interviews from the king of reality television. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. Oh, snackies, good evening everybody, you are tuned in to Survivor Oz as we continue our coverage of the 29th season of Survivor, San Mandel Sir, we are into the 10th Oztopsy after another fantastic episode on, may I just say, Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to all our American live viewers and listeners and one of our Oslets who I'll introduce in just a second, you should be off eating turkey and watching giant balloons float in big cities and not tuning into this crap, but we appreciate that you're here all the same. Uh, I have four wonderful Oslets joining me to discuss this week's episode. And we have a very full room of people. Hey, this is our highest rating episode of the season. <laughs> wow, we might get um, picked up for another season next year at this rate. Uh, all the way from the US of A, Mr. Thanksgiving himself, uh, Anthony Rossi. Rossi, what the hell are you doing on this show? Go eat some turkey. Well, it's 6.30 in the morning. So? so? You're American. You eat all the time, don't you? That's not the spirit. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing it wrong. Go and give that. What are you thankful for, Rossi? Come on, get in the spirit. Uh, John and Jacqueline staying in the game. Good. I'm glad. Um, speaking of glad, it's Alex Barilla. Alex, welcome back to Survivor Oz. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. Pleasure to be here. I feel like I talked to you only 12 hours ago on another episode of another show. <laughs> yeah, I seem to get around... You do. You're the slut of Survivor Oz, so hopefully you use condoms a lot. Speaking of sluts, it's Noah Groves. Noah, welcome Great. back to Survivor Oz. Uh, gobble, 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 <laughs> and thanks for having me, and a big shout-out to the new people listening who don't usually join us, like Gerard and other person whose name isn't showing up, and, of course, Catherine, and the other person whose name I can't see. So thanks for joining us. It's good to have people here. I know. Catherine... Catherine, you're spreading the word. Good on you, Catherine. Uh, I think I'm going to leave too much pressure with like, these eight people. <laughs> well, um, I'm very glad, actually, we've got an extra audience, because, uh, guys, if we get uh, stuck for topics, I will continue reading from the princess who lost her nose. Uh, I know you're all on a nice edge after last week's uh, cliffhanger, so <laughs> maybe we'll read a couple of extra chapters for you. Jared Lubick's back as well. Jared, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Thank you, On Fire, with the um, segues tonight. I'm glad that um, we'll be hearing more from that story because, to be honest, that's the only reason I'm here. I don't even know where we got up to. We had three chapters, didn't we? Uh, (laughs) I uh, I actually read the whole thing out on the brink last Friday, so uh, you missed out. Both my listeners that morning listened in. But um, anyway, we're here to talk about Survivor. Guys, uh, your thoughts on this week's episode. Let's start with you, Mr. Lubeek. I thought it was great. Um, so much sort of happened from like the challenges to the idol finding, but then the best thing of all was just that tribal council. I mean, the outcome was probably slightly disappointing and anticlimactic, but just the whole sort of changing of the vote and, and Keith running his mouth and sort of spoiling everything and then Natalie telling John to play the idol, it was excellent. And I just want to send a special cheerio to Rat, who's back. Rat, thank you for adding me as a friend on Spreecast. <laughs> it's been a while, Rat. It has. I didn't even realise you could add friends on Spreecast, but Rat, I am your friend on Spreecast, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Jared, for your comments. I, I like them. Noah, anything? Uh, what do you think of this week's episode? Uh, kind of like last week, I thought it started off a bit all right, but not that good, kind of meh. By the end of it, um, the Tribal Council made up for everything that happened in the episode, made it so good. And I don't, last week I made a bold statement about the biggest view of Blindside ever. I'm going to say this was the funniest challenge ever in Survivor history, and I won't budge on that. It was hilarious every moment of it, and the reward was great, and 
This season is so good! I'm loving this season. It's awesome. Can I just say... I can't get enough. I just want to point out there that um, we are the greatest thing to happen to Survivor ever because not only have we brought back green buffs, um, we've made <laughs> we've made this season good after our rant a few weeks ago and our in-season promotions of CBS shows happened this week. Catching so on. We honestly are just taking over Survivor and making I it I love ours. that show. Yes. <laughs> so good for us. You're welcome, universe. Uh, oh God, I'm turning into Sky. <laughs> Alex, help me. I'm turning into Sky. What are you talking about this um this week's episode? <laughs> Get out, Ben. No. Um, I thought we were done with that crap. No. Um, I enjoyed this week's episode again. It, it was a bit slow starting, but you know, it was entertaining to kind of see kind of the dynamics change throughout the episode. And as the others said, that uh, that tribal was just something else. <laughs> Oh, it was, um, it was, it was something else and a half. Uh, Rossi. Uh, yeah, like the others said, started off slow. I was like, uh, Reed's going home. Wins immunity. What? Guess he's not going home. And then tribal council, just crazy shit. More spitting. Couldn't control it. (laughs) This was the episode of spitting. Like, Keith spitting (laughs) is catching on. You know, we had Reed spitting, Keith spitting, Natalie spitting on herself. Keith spit spit this (laughs) way. Keith spat about three times this episode. Didn't you see it? I'm being the best is when, and, um, to it because it's happened so much. <laughs> go, go, Jared. <laughs> the best was, was when um he was sitting out the challenge and like Keith sitting out and then he just spits in disgust. <laughs> I, I had to. I love the Natalie bit, and I don't think people caught on to my tweet because I thought it was funny when she spat all over herself and she's like, "Oh, I can't even spit." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's because she prefers to swallow." Um, but. <laughs> Damn. Oh, We're come five on. Minutes into it was podcast. funny. It was funny. We're on double. We're all laughing. We're on double digits. I'm allowed to be a bit naughty tonight. Um, but Rat, call in. Yeah, can we can we seriously have Rat call in? Um, there's the number. Anybody can call in, by the way. 039-005-6429. I actually, I could give you a prize, Rat. If you're a Jay Byers fan, uh, I've got a signed Jay Byers poster I could give you. I've got about two of them, actually. So, but you have to ring them. You have to ring. Like, I'm not just going to give you one. Like, you've got to do something. Um, maybe I'll just put that out there to anybody who wants to ring. Maybe if you're a big J. All Byers, of you. All of you. All ten of you. Let's have a massive phone call. Um, oh, so here's eyes for me. Like, while on the podcast. Say that again, Alex. We can ring while on the podcast. Well, we have the number, but, like, how many of these have you done, Alex? <laughs> I think it. I, I think it doesn't like. Like I think you have to leave a voicemail. But um, if you really want to like actually talk live, we can just you can add us on Skype and we can chat that way. But um, what happens if you call? Well, Reese, call the number. Um, call it. There it is. And as I said, I think it just goes to voicemail. I don't think for some reason it allows me to answer the call live for some stupid reason. Um, and but yeah, look, if you want to talk, we will give you a Skype and you can add us. Anyway. Um, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. This episode, within like 30 seconds of them doing the promo at the start, um, when they were talking about the idols, was it obvious to people that where there were going to be idols played? I'm going to ask you, Noah, because you sort of said on Twitter that you were like, oh, unless CBS are doing their poor advertising again. Well, I swear in that intro we had footage that we had not seen in the show before. I swear there was footage of... And Natalie is going to be looking for the idol. Will she find it? Um, and there was like footage of her with Bayland, unless it was from Exile Island, but I swear that was not in the episode. Maybe I'm crazy. Crazy. Um, <laughs> that's just a the number there for Reese, by the way. Let me know if you got that. Um, well, it was interesting that we finally got... Well, no, I need to get one idol. We got two idols played. But um, the ma- the magical third idol that we, we had no reference to at all. And it was like, it was like, oh, Keith has an idol, John has an idol, and there's still an idol in play. Well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> did we know um, about this? Well, I think we've established now that it was the Koyopa idol, but it would have been nice to have one reference between episode three and episode ten about this Koyopa idol. Like, it's been a long time, folks. Very much <laughs> like, so. This was... This was a hashtag viewer blindside, I think. Well, so will there be two more idols like added now that two of? Well, that's what I was thinking. Hmm. Rossi, your take on extra idol gate? Um, did we <laughs> did we need this third idol? 
Um, no. But, I mean, that was pretty obvious. Natalie was going to find the idol. Just because it was all in the promos. And idols haven't been played yet. I wonder if it's going to happen. And then Jeff keep mentioning it at Tribal Council. That didn't answer your question, but whatever. Nobody ever answers my questions, Rossi. I'm used to it. I um I wanted somebody to share that picture on um social media somewhere of that Buzz Lightyear one with Woody. Idols, idols everywhere. Um, I think Nick or somebody used that one of our features earlier. That was funny. oh, that was me. Was that you? Me. Sorry, Alex. Sorry. No, I just I just realised that was relevant. Yeah, sorry. It was, re- it was relevant. It was you. Um, <laughs> uh, Jared, third idol gate. Anything to add? Um. Not particularly. I thought it was good, sort of, that it was there. Like, normally I'd be one sort of campaigning for, for less idols, but I think the fact that when Rocker went home, you kind of had Baylor and, and Natalie on, on Redemption, uh, Exile Island, and then you saw, like, sort of that there was a new clue, so there was sort of the hint that maybe there was a new idol at Coyopa, so I was glad that they sort of just left it there. Mr. Buzz Lightyear, Marilla, anything to add? Yeah, I'll be perfectly honest. I just completely forgot that there was another one possibly out there. And I thought the preview was like Natalie going to go nuts looking for an idol that just did not exist. So I was quite surprised when um, Jeff was like, oh, there's another one. I'm like, oh, that makes more sense now. I know we're jumping a little bit here when she finds the idol, but I just loved it when they found it. And they're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, she's sitting Where there. Where were they running? Uh, they ran into the water hole, a water well or something like that. And then I love Natalie's confession, which is like, oh, it's my Twitty. Oh, it's my little friend. This oh, idol is sick. Nadia. <laughs> the idol is sick, I felt bad for Nadia. <laughs> It's Being sick. Replaced. It's sick. Um, and somebody pointed out on Twitter that it would be the first uh, idol found by a female contestant since Abby in Philippines. Somebody pointed out Andrea, but she was technically given that idol, was she not? Texas. W- was why? Because what? <laughs> it's just a joke because we say everything sexist. It is. Well, it is incredibly sexist, but. Um, Random stat. The episode was interesting how, like, it started off, we had this whole, like, you know, the back from Tribal Council, back at camp, uh, then we go pretty much straight into the reward challenge. Got to point out Keith's quote, um, <laughs> talking about Reed. oh, that guy's really smart, he talks to folks, he knows mathematics and numbers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's what they teach you in school, Keith. <laughs> Don't know if you have been there. This was a very Keith... Uh, well, actually, it was a Keith slash Wes quote friendly episode. Um, we'll get to we'll get to some of Wes's, but um, <laughs> we we have the reward challenge. It's you know jump off, grab something, get puzzles. Um, you know, uh, wasn't that special, Alex? Anything on the challenge, the reward challenge? Um, typical Survivor challenge. Uh, before I go on it, whenever it comes back at some point to Australia, I've got to practice with keys. Yes, yes. Um, I should mention Jeff uh, orgasming over all the food again. Hot dogs, caramel corn. Uh, <laughs> I love talking about the reward. Hats, bats, <laughs> helmets. Like, does he just do that to every single thing now? Like, you're going to tribal. Council, like, <laughs> he loves it, chair. And if anybody has seen, we posted it on our Facebook and Twitter a couple of hours before this episode, and we're <laughs> going to close the episode with it. The um, Jeffisms remix that CBS put up. Um, every time that one of those quotes is said, and he says, "I just keep hearing it in my head." Survivor's ready. Survivor's ready. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> my favourite is fire. Represent your life when your fire's gone. So are you. <laughs> I'm so disappointed that there is no, you got to pick it up, or of course, no, dig woman, dig woman. Dig woman, dig woman, dig, 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 dig woman. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we make our own and just have it filled with dig woman, dig woman. K. 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 I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing okay. <laughs> you got to pick it up. Um, oh, no, we should totally do one of just, like, um, perform for me. Bring me some meat. <laughs> Bring me some more meat. <laughs> and, and his, and his um, Rupert impersonation. I'm Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a project that I'm doing during the week. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm even going to write... No, I won't write it down. I'll, I'll remember to do it. Um, and we also got Jeff yelling at Missy, Get up, Missy! 
when she's like coming out of the water. Ah, <laughs> oh, good, good challenge for Jeff. Um, but the, what, the team that won it, uh, then uh, who was it? Uh, Reed gave it up for Missy because oh. Baylor had a bit of a cry. No, Noah, uh, anything to say? Straight away, I was like, oh, Reed's getting voted out. <laughs> oh, I say it every. This never is good. It never benefited anything. It never works. It's, it's, it's turning into the new blood versus water burning the idol. It's, are people just going to be giving up rewards every week now? Like, next thing I mean, you know, technically someone's going to. Gonna... What do you mean? Well, I mean, Missy got to go on rewards, so it worked for her. <laughs> <laughs> the intended goal never turns out of making them look like heroes and gaining allies. It just never works. And Well, Reed yeah. at least said that there was an ulterior motive in that Missy was away from camp and he could talk to Keith. So there was, like, mild underlining in it. I don't think anything to do with Missy and Reed is going to matter <laughs> next week anyway, so it's all gone down the shit anyway. Jared? Um, no, I thought it was an okay move just because, like, he said that he wanted to, to talk to Keith without John and Jacqueline around. I mean, they were gone, and then Natalie and Baylor were, were so it was busy, so he just got plenty of time to sort of talk through what he wanted to do with Keith, which obviously, from this week, like, Keith just had a really dumb episode. Like, it, this episode <laughs> painted him out to be so stupid, like, everything that happened, like... Like how Noah was saying, like, last week, like, Keith might win. Like, I sort of agreed with him, but, like, after tonight, it just, it was a really <laughs> bad episode for Keith. I just want to point out that you say this moment, uh, it was a heart-to-heart come-to-Jesus moment um, that Reed pointed out when he wanted to speak to Keith. And then, you know, he full-on explains everything, and then he gets there and turns to Keith, what are your thoughts? And Keith is just like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Keith. Bless his cotton little socks. <laughs> if you don't like Keith, you are Satan. Oh, exactly. Like, Keith is amazing. I love... He's a great character, but, yeah. <laughs> the guy, the guy, intelligence-wise... Although, I will, actually, I will say, like, there was one moment, like, during the, the immunity challenge, when um, he was saying to Natalie, like, that's your team over there. Like, you know, they're all... Yeah, that, I thought that was good from yeah. Keith, if we have to give him some sort of credit. Absolutely, yeah. That, you've got to give him credit for that, because he's like, absolutely. Um, <laughs> he's like, you know, you're fighting for your team, we're up here fighting for our lives. So, I think that was kind of cool. Um, but back at the, quickly, the reward challenge. Great reward. Uh, I love the interactions with the locals. We got the little baseball one. John, you know, happy John. Um, but I, I wanted to point out, John, when he's talking, like, we finally actually got them talking about this condition that Jacqueline has. We haven't seen that all season. But I loved it when John turned around and said, she's one of the most important people I know. Only one of. Like, you know, if, I I'm, if I'm talking about Louise, I'm going to be like, she's the most important person I know. Or like, she's, you know, the most important to me. Not just one of. <laughs> like, how many people does John have this connection with out there? John? Anyway, that's what I'd put that out. Uh, to be fair, he's dad. Well, true, but yep. Yeah. Alex, uh, I think you were about to say something. I'm saying John's still in love with Drew, isn't he? For bromance and all that. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, I think <laughs> that uh, seed was edited so well. I think that reward seed. Say that again. Sorry, I was just reading the comments in the thing. I was not paying attention. To that. <laughs> I was pulling a. I was pulling a Rossi. <laughs> that hey. scene, at the reward was very well edited. I think it like, was yes. with the kids, and I never get emotional watching TV shows or movies ever. Like if someone dies or gets cancer, it's just like whatever. But I was a little emotional at that scene, the way they edited it. I felt bad for the like it was for the kids. Yeah, yeah, those, those bats. They were just. Second grade back. Like, it was very sad. They should have had the top class back. I love John when he gets here and he's like, Bats! Bases! <laughs> um, no, it's sad, it was sweet. Like, good on him. What about Grant Bowler's death? Um, Jared asks. <laughs> Would you be sad at that? What, what, what did you say? Jared asked a question in the chat. Would you be sad about Grant Bowler's death? Oh... Uh... 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's Hang not on a real Catherine's person. Don't... He's just a TV character. Don't say that about Grant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about Phil? Ah, uh, yeah. Phil's, um, we love Phil, but he runs away from gay people, we've discovered, so. <laughs> <laughs> Noah's just watched an episode 2006 tonight. reference. 2006 <laughs> Phil runs away from gay people. But, um... <laughs> yeah, up to date with the references, Ben. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, if my audio is cutting out, let me know. We've lost, we lost Reese. um... But uh, I don't know if... Well, he's not dead. Like, he's still there. Like, he's alive. He, he had to leave. Would you cry if Reese died? I would, because Reese contacted me on Twitter and asked about this to, like, come and watch it. Like, I don't I don't get that. So, it's emotional. That and Reece... where is he now? Where is he now? He's going to think of a good voicemail message to leave us tomorrow. <laughs> so... Um, all right, so we had the idol, we talked about that, um, then we had, I think we should talk a lot about the immunity challenge. <laughs> okay, I just want to point out, straight away, I'm like, oh, another fucking challenge where they just stand on something for ages, good on your modern survivor, this is all individual immunity <laughs> challenges are, but like... That was the shit part. Everything else was brilliant about this challenge. First of all, it went for, what, three hours. That is the longest fucking challenge we have had in a very long time. So props to them for having an endurance challenge that was an endurance challenge. But it all started... I'm going to start with Jared and thoughts on this challenge in general. And we'll mention the best bits. But it all started with Jeff pulling out the candy, walking all up around them, (laughs) rubbing it in their face... (laughs) Um, you know, eating it, eating it, um, <laughs> and basically, um, and who was it? Somebody said, "Oh, you can do better than that," and he's like, "I don't have to do better. You can get down whenever you want." <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we had hashtag tempting. <laughs> well, it was hashtag tempting, so I can't fault them on that. Jared, how good was this challenge? It was great. Like, not only do I love endurance challenges, but when they sort of bring out the food and Jeff was in his element this season, he's just been, like, f- just full of sass and he-, he knows exactly what to say and he cuts people down. So it was so enjoyable. I I loved it when um, John gets down for it and then <laughs> Jeff's like, oh, sorry, I took a bite. And <laughs> <laughs> This is a new Jeff. This is a reinvention. Jeff is having so much fun this season. Like this, maybe is... maybe he's still having bad memories from the whole Colby taking a bite of the chocolate bar. <laughs> Colby not eat. It's repressed memories of Colby and the chocolate bar. Yes, but um, I I love the editing when John takes a bite of the thing and he's like, "Oh, sugar!" And then I like zoom, <laughs> out, zoom out and like make it sound like zoom he's out. echoed around all of Nicaragua. Like, oh, sugar! <laughs> oh, so brilliant. And then um, I'm going to get Noah your thoughts next. And then we get, um, if anyone picked up how I opened it deliberately, Baylor's quote of, oh, snarkies, this is hard. <laughs> what the hell is snarkies? <laughs> uh it's a southern thing. Is that the name of a new album? <laughs> Baylor Wilson. My snarkies are melting. <laughs> Snarky situation. What's <laughs> <laughs> all uh, snarky? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this challenge. Come on, the brilliance of it. <laughs> um, yeah, you know I'm going to ravel on for a bit, but um, I think it is probably... I said the funniest challenge ever, and I stick by that, but also one of the best challenges in maybe five years. It was just so many... I've already watched it four times. I've watched the episode twice, and I've watched that scene four times, because there's just so much, and I feel like we won't even cover anything, but like you said, sugar! Um, (laughs) Jeff eating the candy, I could not believe that, um, that he ate it, and the comment you mentioned where... Oh, it's your million dollars. I don't care if you step down. <laughs> and, um, of course, we mentioned Natalie spitting all on herself. Um, I don't have any spit. Um, that was unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Keith calling out uh, John and, well, I'm 56. So how old are you? <laughs> and, oh, wow. All righty then. <laughs> that was great. Um Missy jumping down and like going, 
oh, it's so nice down here, and Baylor going, just quiet down, homie G. <laughs> like, that was great. <laughs> um, like, every single second of this challenge, and then, of course, like, it, and Baylor, that shot of her when the cookies were revealed <laughs> and ruddy, like, her eyes just lit up, and all I could think of was, my Dairy Queen is melting <laughs> and getting everywhere. Like, um, and... Yeah, her running there, and then Wes running to the um, like the ribs, and of course the Wes moments of I have fifty eight chickens in five minutes, <laughs> and then Je- you ate what in what you ate what and what <laughs> what fifty eight nuggets, and, and then Jeff uh, is that an annual competition? <laughs> I just got the sense Jeff was in his prime, but do you, does anyone get the sense that Jeff was kind of talking down on Wes? Like oh, just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think yeah. that I think that was really. Sh- I think that was really really shown um, when <laughs> Wes and we're going to get to because I want to dedicate a moment to this scene when um, Wes is asking about. Oh, remember when you were cooking? Pancakes? Oh, bacon? Like, you just thought Jeff was kind of like, oh, shut up. <laughs> and then, yeah, that was fun. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, all the Wes moments, of course, and even reading Natalie after, and Natalie ordering food. Oh, yeah. I wanna, she's ordered a plate of food. <laughs> apparently, you're allowed to do that now in Survivor. Like, I'll have this, I'll have this, and Jeff is just like, uh, okay. I just love the idea that Jeff has all this, like, any food you could ask for, and um, he just has it on standby, but he should have said, well, are you going to take your clothes off for him? <laughs> like, where's Jenna, Jenna and Heidi? <laughs> yeah, God, I wonder if Jen, was Jenna tweeting during this episode going, damn, I might have to take my clothes off for that. <laughs> but, yeah, and then Natalie jumping down, can't get to the food, and um, Reed doing the splits and coming <laughs> over. That was funny. Yeah. I feel like I've even missed some moments. I was going to write everything I've down. I've written down a lot I've... here. I've written down a lot. Before I get to those, though, um, Alex, your thoughts on it? Oh, it was just good fun to watch. Good old-fashioned food, tempting challenges. It kind of makes you go like, how much pain would I go through before I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to win and just go and take the food. But as I was saying with my brother, we always find it interesting that people jump out at like, the first food item they show because we're like, you know there's going to be better food, right? Like, yeah. You've just got to stick it out a couple more minutes and you wait for the good food, right? And I wouldn't step down for... I'm not even a big lolly candy fan. Oh, no, no way would I step down for that. I'd wait for the ribs and the beers and the chicken and the pizza and the good stuff. Yep. Plus, you don't want Jeff herpes. <laughs> Imagine if that exactly. was Dawson. If the, like if Dawson was in that challenge and... Oh, my God, Jeff ate it. I'm down. <laughs> He'd be running like Baylor. Yes. Oh, God, that was funny. Uh, Rossi? Probably top 10 immunity challenges, only for the fact of what their interactions and everything. I mean, you guys are going to say most of it, so just a good challenge. I just wanted to point out, because when Baylor, like, straight away was like, and, like, dropped down, Jacqueline was pretty much the same. I, at that moment, imagined I walked into the room. So, <laughs> Ben's here! You should, you should edit that clip of you walking down and then them running. I'll just get, like, really shitty amateur footage of me walking into a room going, Ben's here! <laughs> yeah, even in an indoors room as well, just to just make it even worse. <laughs> the worst editing ever. <laughs> Almost as good as my writing on The Princess, who lost her nose. Um, like we, we, I mean, I mentioned the sexual innuendo from Natalie. Um, you know, we're always on Jeff's sexual innuendos, but I love sexual innuendos from contestants. Um, when Jeff Probst is like, John lasted seven minutes and Jacqueline was like, oh, that's all it's been. <laughs> like, I'm like, I bet you she says that all the time. Uh, <laughs> sugar! Sugar! <laughs> Uh, what were the other ones? Uh, Alec saying like, oh, it's like Jesus on the cross. Um, yeah, and I think Emma mentioned Alec's ridiculous Jesus cross thing. Like, I've got no nothing against Jesus crosses, but this is like from a 70s disco. Or from his <laughs> one. Um, I loved Keith versus the Wasp. 
I didn't notice that the first time. I noticed that the second time. Damn wasp! <laughs> and was there a butterfly there as well? I swear I saw a butterfly around someone's leg. I didn't see the butterfly. Um, of course, we got a <laughs> like with the what? What? Fifty-eight nuggets in five minutes. Like <laughs> the way you said that. Um, and yeah, um, the whole what was? Oh no, I've written here. Was it when Natalie ordered the food and then Jeff's like, wow. Because, like, Reed, like, gave that wink. And just the way Jeff was like, wow. And then Reed spits um, when he wins. And then Natalie's like, do you see this fool? When he, like, does the splits. Um, but, yeah, I think we need to bring a separate mention, of course, to um, the random West moment. <laughs> what about that episode of Two and a Half Men when you were cooking pancakes? And then Jeff is like, uh, bacon? <laughs> He's like, yeah, oh, I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> I love that show. Like, oh, like that was just gold, and just Jess' reaction He's just like, "Yeah, bacon." Yeah, that was yeah, that was fun. <laughs> like, this is just I just so funny that we've like mentioned we did a whole episode, like our second or third Oz Topsy, where the whole thing was like, "Oh, and you can have two and a half men Thursdays on CBS." <laughs> But just do you get the sense that like it seems so awkward? But do you get the sense in those three-hour challenges that they probably do chat a fair bit? Oh yeah. Like, but then I'm, I get the feeling that maybe Wes wasn't doing the chatting, and then he comes out with, like, "Oh, where'd you grow up, Jeff?" and all that, and then Wes, oh, what about the pancake on the uh, um, two and a half men? I think uh, it was. Bacon? I think um, I remember in Danny's uh, interview, she was saying that when she was on Survivor, that basically she would because like they're both from Kansas, so that they she mentioned like she would talk to him about certain things from Kansas, and then basically bag him out because she was like, "Oh, you don't sound like you're from Kansas, or you don't act like you're from Kansas, or something like that." So, <laughs> I mean, I reckon, yeah, in three hours, like I'm sure that they're going to talk to him, like, "Oh, so on that season when Dawson kissed you, what did you really, you know, like just the way that it was edited though looked so." Uh... Like, yeah, like they were asleep on each those... other. And... <laughs> and then, what about that episode? <laughs> like... But in a serious, serious editing note, is anyone else shocked they actually left that in there? Like, oh, I can't well... believe they left. It was one of the best moments in Survivor, like top 50, but I can't believe they left it in there. <laughs> so convenient, of course. Like I was just waiting. I was just waiting. You know how they do those pop-up graphics at the bottom of the screen? I don't think they do that too much on Survivor anymore. But I was just waiting for them to like have a have a thing of like John Cryer and Ashton Kutcher coming up, like two and a half men, CBS. They should have um, done the whole thing. So it's like, yeah, I love that show. And then John's like, oh, yeah, there's someone with my name called John Cryer starring in it. And then... Jacqueline, oh, I've heard it's the final season. Yeah. And then, like, on the Baylor, it airs on Thursday nights. <laughs> they but need it, to go the full Monty with that. What would have been even funnier if Natalie turned around and goes, oh, look, I'll tell you one thing, I would step down if John Cryer brought me out a plate of pizza <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and John Cryer just walks out like, hi, everyone! It's Alan! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and then a laugh track. <laughs> <laughs> and then Charlie Sheen, don't forget about me! <laughs> Ah, oh, I wish We've Charlie saving- Sheen was coming uh, back. Say that again, Alex. We've been saving these guys at the back for like 20 seasons. So <laughs> someone asking for them. We're here every season. Um, well, what's the name for the Big Bang Theory, the fan of Survivor? Like, you're just expecting her to rock up one time. Oh, <laughs> Amy Farrah Fowler or whatever her name is. Um, and only, only a matter of time before Josh McDermott is coming, stalking in the bushes, watching. <laughs> like, yes. Just in the background of the shot. Oh, who's that stalker? David Letterman. I think it's Josh McDermott, the star of Stalker. <laughs> oh, and who's this interview with David Letterman retiring next year on CBS? <laughs> Oh, we're doing Wait, this together. Josh aren't we? or Dylan? I can't remember. Uh, Dylan McDermott, isn't it? Yeah. No, doing this Um, Alex, you mentioned there about the feet. I was going to say that, like, we had the feet challenge. Like, like I tell you what, the CBS editors have gone on strike and discovered their foot fetish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> everything is about feet. Alex, you're a foot fetish man, clearly. Oh, my girlfriend hates them. I love using them against her. Um, it's just. I don't know. I just was like, hey, just check out his feet. And a sudden shot, you're like, ugh. They're, they're, uh, they're different. I'm disturbed by that comment that you just made. I love using my feet against her. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact, too, that, by the I way, like we've, we've lost half of our audience. <laughs> We're down to four. So clearly... It wasn't me. 
<laughs> the Damn you, Reese. <laughs> Reese took all our viewers with us. Um, Damn it, Rossi. Reed wins immunity. The, f- <laughs> the first. <laughs> Shut up, Rossi. Uh, the first. <laughs> the first person to ever win an immunity. This is gonna. This is gonna be a stat on um, oh, Survivor no. Wiki. I guarantee it. The first ever person to get an immunity necklace presented whilst doing the splits. <laughs> and claiming their favourite actor is Brad Pitt. Yes. But CBS did a bit of trick- trickery here because I did the uh, preview r- write-up thingy and in the ads, they show a shot of Reed at Tribal Council with no immunity idol on and the only person they don't show is Wes. So I'm like, oh, Wes get- wins the uh, um, individual immunity and he was the one who goes home. So CBS really hamming up the trickery. Yes. Well, I remember you told me that they gave it away and then I noticed in the our preview thing that you write for us that you'd written them be spoilers below. I, I deliberately avoided it. I didn't even know. They're on to me. They're doing it just to fuck up my preview. Look at this, Noah. Again, we are changing the face of Survivor. <laughs> like... Changing the whole CBS um, reality department now. Hey, we're apparently getting their other shows to come to Hobart as well. Um, so <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe, allegedly. Uh, we, are, we are doing the dirty work for CBS. You're welcome. We expect to check them out. Uh, so then we get back to camp. We get this whole plan by Reed um, to take out John, get uh, Alec, Wes, and Keith on board. And um, I just I loved Alec uh, when he's there with Missy and uh, John, and they're like, "Are you okay?" And he's you know just trying to like he, he oversold it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm down. Yeah, I'm down. Let's do this. Like that was in all fairness to him, it worked. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> it did. You can't fault it. It worked. Like you can say it looked fake or whatever. It worked. It so did. I can't really fault him. I did. True point. True point. Um, and then we get this whole amazing tribal council where Keith basically screws up the entire plan. I just wanted to point out one thing I noticed on the rewatch, which would be perfect. I don't know how to make gifts, but if somebody wants to make a gift, <laughs> the part where Jeff turns around and says, oh, yeah, you've got to roll the dice. He actually, he goes like, and this is only good for people who are watching this, not listening to it. He does his whole, and then like rolls the dice. But I'm just wanting <laughs> there to be a clip of him like doing the, the wank motion. <laughs> like, Jeff Probst thinks you're a dickhead. Maybe that was just me. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Tribal Council, shut up, Ben. Rossi, everything that happened, what was your take on it all? Um, I don't remember Tribal Council, except for Natalie telling John to play the idol, and then he plays the idol. So you don't remember you, Tribal you Council? You don't remember the Tribal Council? You, you don't remember one of the most memorable Tribal Councils in the last... You get, like... <laughs> You Were don't you, like, attacked or something overnight, Rossi? Like, <laughs> Pre-Thanksgiving um, drinks? <laughs> oh, there was popcorn. Day popcorn. Was it caramel? No. Caramel. <laughs> caramel. Caramel. What happened? What happened? I'm trying oh, to remember now. Nothing. It was just a standard vote out. You know, West just Oh, went. okay. Yeah. Nothing exciting. Yeah. We, okay, t- we talked about it then, clearly. Yep. <laughs> Well, that was nice talk. We'll see you on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon, the princess who lost her nose podcast. Uh, Alex, uh, well, maybe you can fill us in on a fairly low tribal council, clearly. <laughs> Look, it was pretty low-key. They all came in and sat down on posts, and then Jeff addressed several people through several low-key questions, asking them very generic things about idols and trust. Um... And then all hell broke loose, and it was great. <laughs> Did anybody notice when Keith said, stick to the plan, and then they're all like, oh, fuck, fuck, shit, fuck, fuck, shit, fuck. Um, <laughs> and then Keith's evil laugh, like Keith was like, fuck, yeah. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, Someone needs to edit um, South Park. Stick to the plan, and then South Park. Rubble, 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 over the top of that. <laughs> rubble, 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 rubble. They took rubble, 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 rubble. <laughs> <laughs> They took our jobs. They took our jobs. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Someone do that. Yes, yes, and then somebody get the Mormon episode, dum 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> and last week, uh, Taco Fly Big Kiss. <laughs> Jesus, the South Park themed episodes now. <laughs> Sugar! Uh, <laughs> Talk about 2006 references. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's gay people! Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god, I, I, oh. I don't even know what the question was. No, a tribal council. <laughs> um, yeah, like Alex said, all hell broke loose. Um, Keith, no, not the smartest um, cookie in the tin, but um, you can have smart cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, ask yeah, Angie. You're a smart cookie. <laughs> Well, if you get a cookie for being... Oh, shut up! <laughs> yeah, um... Stop shitting on my analogies just because Baylor can have a good analogy according to Pro because he's like, oh, yeah, good analogy, Baylor. My evil mirrors. Woo. Uh, but the one about Dairy Queens and Honey, work on those ones. But I like the mirror one, Baylor. Good job. Um, yeah, like you said, Keith. But I've got a bit of a crackpot theory on Keith's thing. I don't think he did it on purpose, but I think it's going to help him more than it would have hindered him because Keith almost went home. <clears throat> Next week, surely Reed is the biggest target to be going home. So while the four Reed plan may have worked, it wouldn't have stuck to the final four. So I actually think it's probably bettered Keith's chances, as dumb as it may have sounded when he did it. But um. And then, yes, I always love it when people are scrambling at Tribal and Jeff's comment. Jeff was on fire tonight. Jeff's comment when Reed was going and, oh, he's still talking and he's going up to vote. <laughs> like, Jeff loved it, but... Jeff had a boner. Then, Jeff had a boner. Yeah. <laughs> he was kind of, like, crouching down a bit. You could see in the background <laughs> trying to... Turning his back to the camera. But, yeah, um, of course, yeah, the votes. We don't see the votes. And then... John plays the idol Nat, uh, from Natalie. 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 <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> um, Natalie. But here's the thing. I'm uh, sorry for rattling on again, but people are saying online. Yeah, no, jeez. Shut up, Rossi. Natalie is the most brilliant. <laughs> Rossi, at least I watched the episode. Um, <laughs> Natalie is the most brilliant player ever. She planned this to flush two idols out. Natalie's a good player. That was not a move planned by Natalie to flush two idols out. That was Natalie saying, oh, I think you're in trouble. Play the idol. And then he's like, are you sure? And she says, oh, I don't mind. So if someone's planning to flush two idols out spare of the moment, they don't say, oh, I don't know. They're saying yes. And, yeah, I love her. That's just the most bullshit thing I've ever heard, saying that was her master plan. But good on her. And then Keith. The idol, and then of course Jeff. No one has any votes, which I think is, sums up this episode so well. Do you think that uh, um, that that was it was? I mean, you said about that, Natalie, but I, I think it comes down more to the the dumbness and non awareness of John. Like, because John's like, are well, you, are you wonder, sure? Should I? I wonder how much um, that was her, and how much it was just him thinking of it, and then she kind of confirmed his... Like, I'm sure he thought about maybe playing it. Maybe she just confirmed it. I don't know. Maybe. I can't vouch for that, but... Ja- Jacqueline then, probably said something. Yeah, Jacqueline. She's always doing something good, but... Yeah, um, no votes, and, of course, where's... Uh, what was I going... I can't remember, but... Yeah, oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Two idols played correctly, like... Idols are often not played correctly, and it can be very entertaining, like um, Kageyan Merge with Sarah, which is not number two viewer blindside, no, 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 but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, they can be played incorrectly, but I just love this idea of two idols being played correctly, and no one has any votes, and then Wes... We all knew Wes was going home in an anticlimactic... Like, we knew it was not going to be good. Wes is going home eventually. He's not making it to the end. But rather than having a boring, like, artist episode, we had this episode to kick him off. So, this season is so good. And I'm sorry for going on. Get someone else talking. Well, as you pointed out to me today in our uh, weekly post-survivor Facebook (laughs) chat... Which didn't involve any arguments today. Yeah, not as far, and much fighting as normal. I was quite agreeing, actually. Um, you said, like, for a standard, like, and no offence to Wes, but like a person who's like a kind of a, an obvious boot, like we knew he wasn't going to do well. It was No uh, confessionals in the boot club. Joining joining that club. Uh, where, where was that list? Can you pull that list up for me, Noah? That Was that on the Sucks 3? I can have a look. 
find it for me because I want you to tell me who, what the exclusive club West joins of the no votes in their boot episode club. Um, uh, no confessions. Clearly the they got votes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a different club altogether. Um, but yeah, it was, it was entertaining way of, um, you know, not the most memorable person going out. Jared, do you have anything? I remember something. Oh my God, Rossi, please tell us. In the tribal council, in the boring question section of the the early part of the tribal council, mm-hmm. uh, they asked Reed about idols. Mm-hmm. Why did he blatantly throw Wes and Keith under the bus with the idols if he was working with them? Well, I guess he can't exactly publicly. That is a really good vote. Uh, point, Rossi, actually. I was, I was because just, I, cause I, it I, can't get more direct than that, is Jeff's Well, yeah, quote. people are shitting on Keith for doing that, but I guess Reed kind of shat on the plan as well, and that's what that was what caused Keith to say, stick with the plan! But, but I, I would say that maybe he's doing that in a way that it doesn't elude suspicion that he's working with them. Yep. yep. Well, it backfired. That would be my thing. I would have just told Keith before Tribal, like, I'm going to throw shit at you. Just be aware it's not actually kind of legit. Noah's got the list. Uh, (laughs) Does anyone want to make any guesses as to who might be on there before I read it? Kim Powers. Oh, Jesus. What's the list again? You're fucking on to that one, Rossi. Kim Powers! (laughs) (laughs) That's like like quicker than Balo running to the cookie. I was like, Jared, sideways. Kim Powers! (laughs) Sideways! (laughs) I've been waiting to answer it for like all these years. Go, go, Kim Powers. Um. <laughs> All right. Joanne you know Ward. The, the list is... Hope. Oh, Hope. Poor little thing. Oh. All right, everyone's had one guess. Is that for you, Ben? Do you have a oh, Well, I, I've, saw, I've seen the list, so I can probably remember some <laughs> All right, the list is Kim Powers. So, Rossi was right. Um, Aaron Collins. Joanne Ward. So, someone was right. Morgan McDevitt. Ah, oh, Morgan. Cecilia Mansilla. Cecilia Mansilla. Uh, Brad Verata. Oh, Brady. oh, that's a shot. Brady. Um, Tim and TJ. Um, Rebecca <laughs> Borman. Rita Verios. Oh, Rita. Rita. Yao Man. Yao, Yao Man in Micronesia. Ooh, Courtney total. Yates in Heroes vs. Villains. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, Candace Cock from Heroes vs. Villains. Who? Um, <laughs> Keith Tollefson, best known for The Amazing Race 25, had no... Oh, this is a shock one. I can't believe this. Leif Manson didn't even have a confessional <laughs> in his boot episode. Fucking travesty. And he stepped down on the thing to give people hamburgers. <laughs> um, Michael Snowy Snow didn't have one. Oh. Eric Reichenbach on his Medivac, which that was a crime. Oh, Katie Collins on her rock draw. That's shocking. And of course... Yes. What was that? <laughs> I just said, given that there's only six people like in that episode, that's kind of horrifying. But didn't yeah, she go crazy. the next episode? So did that? Well, at Redemption, but she didn't have a confessional there either. So, no. oh yes, okay. I see what you're talking about, Rossi. Yeah, you're right. And of course, I love that. Well, what now, Noah? Nail. <laughs> well, I said you were right. She didn't get any. She didn't get Shut any up. on the one she got voted out on, but she did on the one that she was eliminated on. Oh, so Rossi is wrong. Woo! Yeah, she got one confessional on the episode that she Shut was up, eliminated. Noah. Oh Jesus, children! Because <laughs> if you want to be technical, then you would look at it. Caleb's episode that he was eliminated on, he got none. Vetus on the ones he was eliminated on, he got none. Aris didn't get one on the episode he was eliminated on. You know, neither did Marissa, neither did Rachel, yeah. neither did Brad. Like, yeah, that's the technicalities of Redemption Island. Anyway, that's the list. Poor those people, they're the black sheep that survive. Oh, well. Poor Wes. Not um, as bad as that movie, Black Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Did, uh, what did you spoil? Noah? Apparently I spoiled The Amazing Race, but I've only seen up to the latest episode, so <laughs> I'm Nostradamus again, I guess. Maybe Catherine hasn't. Catherine, what did I spoil? <laughs> um, well, if you haven't watched it, it's been a week. I know I bitched about it when you told me an hour after it happened, but this is like a week, Catherine. <laughs> um, now, I just, on West going, um, I loved, I don't know, kind of the... I don't know if irony is the correct word. I don't think it is. But um, 
when in his final words, when he says, those wings were definitely not worth a million dollars. I regret that decision stepping off, but you know you've got to wing it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then and then and then sorry, he closed it out with "You have to risk it to get the biscuit." <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I noticed when he wrote that on Twitter, he spelt biscuit with a Q. <laughs> Is that like a sudden thing? Uh, that's, that's my new favourite quote. Um, <laughs> you got to risk it to get the but biscuit. You, you you spoke of irony. Um, how ironic was it that Natalie at the start of the episode talked about I have to get rid of John, and then. She saved John yes. <laughs> by telling him to play the item. So. Uh, um, snarkies and uh, risk it to get the biscuit are my favourite things. And uh, I did watch... I've, I've done something I've never done before and actually watched Ponderosa videos this season. Um, and I did like the West one, the fact that he put 11 pounds on in a day. <laughs> did you that notice that, Noah? <laughs> like, yeah, that was funny. He's lost. He's, he's come back to Ponderosa. He's lost twenty pounds in the day. They uh, in the game. They've weighed him the next day after like eating dinner, and he's put on eleven pounds. That's that basically was, like that five would definitely kilos. Definitely be me. <laughs> One night at Ponderosa, I'd be fatter than I was going into the game. <laughs> Oh, and t- I tell you what, all that the, free food. If you if you're not sounds wat- like a party to me. If you're not watching Ponderosa videos, watch them just to see how epic Ponderosa is. The thing's like a resort. <laughs> yeah, that's Big Brother Nicaragua. Right? I know. If that's what they're filming, it's Big Brother US season whatever. <laughs> um, Catherine, why are you listening to other Survivor podcasts? I don't know. That's not good enough. I love, Get out. I, I love um, I love the um, air quotes. Another Survivor podcast means Rob has a podcast, and Catherine, it's all right to say Rob has a podcast. Ben may may yell a bit, but it's fine. I'm over it. You can say it. Um, that, I'm just pissed. Over at it. What is I'm, there to get over? The Daniel Liu thing, like. Uh, you know, Ben I, Rob Sestanita was on a try. I don't is, care. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I love the another Survivor podcast. Now I'll hold the number up again if anybody wants to. There you go, Rat's gone. Yeah, Reese, why don't you call? Oh wait, Reese is gone. Um, what was I up to? Chapter four of <laughs> the Princess Who Lost Her Nose. Um, yeah, she just lost her nose, and she'd punched herself in the face, um, and then it was something fuzzy. Yeah. Ben, you're really fighting it in on the previously on Princess Karen. Nah, she just lost her nose. <laughs> Chapter 3. He stuck out a long tongue and swallowed her nose completely. She was... need to start with previously on the princess who lost her nose. Previously on P.R. Karen. The princess who lost her nose. P.R. Karen went for a walk and tripped and a fuzzy thing had stolen her nose. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just going to read all three chapters of <laughs> There's 32 chapters, Noah. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, to, to, she's okay. From cha- He stuck out a long tongue and swallowed her nose completely. She was so embarrassed that she punched herself out. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. <laughs> I do that sometimes. <laughs> Does she go to jail for, like, assault? Um, <laughs> violence against women. Australia says no. Um, when the doctor came, he was so <laughs> surprised because she had no nose. <laughs> clearly not. Clearly <laughs> the not. doctor must have studied for lots of years. Is on the side of the road? <laughs> Unprofessional doctor. <laughs> oh, you've got no nose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly, um, not Michael Jackson's doctor. Um, <laughs> too soon. <laughs> it's been five years. Um, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is going to be harder than I thought. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Doctor rape. <laughs> no ah! Oh god, I'm sinking in my chair. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> Chapter 4. I need you guys to put up hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Dr. Rape. Um, <laughs> chapter 4. He pulled out a special stick and looked... <laughs> 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 
This really is Dr. Rape. <laughs> is that the name of the chapter? <laughs> oh, that's the spin-off. Dr. Rape. <laughs> that's his name. It's better than Dr. Oz. Um, <laughs> he pulled out a special stick <laughs> and, <laughs> and knocked her on the head. <laughs> Was that for having no nose? That's nice, Doctor. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> PR Karen woke up and ran around. Oh, God, she's okay then. She's been knocked on the head twice. She's got no nose. She can run around, all right. Um, and then she ran all the way back to the castle. When she got there, she ran into a night suit. She thought if she put it on... It would cover her nose. Oh, she's smart. Chapter five. Smart girl. <laughs> Public relations, Karen. Um, Catherine, if you were to mark this, you'd fail me on spelling. And my teacher has like corrected like three words that I've misspelled. Yet half the bloody story is misspelled. Um, well, she was too into the story. She didn't even pick it up. Oh, she was. She she knew that in like um, eighteen years it would be read out on an internet podcast. Um, chapter five. When she walked to the gate. The guards were shocked because P.R. Karen had the suit of Sir Nicholas I. They bowed at P.R. Karen and let her in. But she was already in the castle. Like, how has she gone in and then come back out and then gone back in again? I don't even make sense of my own stories. Um, Oh, no, everyone's left. Noah's left. Hang on, what's going on here? Have I just, like, lost everybody? Or am I still alive? (laughs) Everyone's so shocked at the story that they've just hung up on me. Uh, I don't even know if anybody in the room can still hear me or if I've gone completely off. Um, I think I might have lost everyone. Oh, I'm so excited of reading this story. I have. I've lost everyone. Damn it. All right. Let's go turn the modem off and on again. I'll be back in two seconds to continue this story. Welcome back to this uh, interesting Oztopsy where... The internet drops out, and apparently I have to wait to continue the epic tale of the princess who lost her nose. I'm just going to add people back in here. You'll hear me call them through right now. The excitement that clearly became too much for everybody. Just wait for it to... Go through. Hello, people. How exciting was that? that Nicholas who? It... <laughs> because... Yes, Nicholas who? Oh, did you did you miss it? Did you? We got, yeah. I got Sir Nicholas and then it dropped out. What, you got you got to what? What was the last bit you heard? Sir Nicholas. Sir Nicholas. <laughs> Didn't get a last name or anything. <laughs> Didn't get a last name. Oh. I think there is a last name. Oh. Dr. Sir Nicholas Ray. Oh, are, we, are we back online, are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Catherine or Edgardo or whatever your name is, tell us if we're online. Am, am I... I don't know if I'm visible. I, oh, Gerard. I can't see myself. Um, it says Cameron. That's called a mirror, Ben. <laughs> I break every time I look at it. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, so what were we up to? So... Uh, uh, Nicholas. When she walked, you might as well start from the start of the chapter now. <laughs> when she walked to the gate, the guards were shocked. Because P.R. Karen had the suit of Sir Nicholas the First, they b- <laughs> <laughs> they bowed at P.R. Karen and let her in. Again, she apparently had left the castle after going in the castle. Wait, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, so she was distracted. Um, they didn't know who she was from the suit, but they let her in. <laughs> yes. I think someone needs to fire those guards. <laughs> All right, a couple more. I need to leave you guys on a cliffhanger here. Uh, when P.R. Carrot walked in to see the king, the king was so amazed because Sir Nicholas I hadn't been seen for a hundred years. <laughs> but wasn't he just outside the castle? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, that's your cloak. I'm sorry, I'm you, getting confused. You would assume that the guy's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just assume Sir Nicholas was probably in his at least twenties. So a hundred. 
<laughs> and maybe he's at least 120, so he probably wouldn't have been sick. Even if he was Sir Nicholas the first and he was a newborn, he'd still be 100. <laughs> like, <laughs> And this is like back in the olden days, remember? So people didn't live, people only live to 50. I did my research in this story. Um, <laughs> the has, has Can people not hear us right now? <laughs> I think I think clearly we're not live, but we're going on with the recording. Here. Um, How do we get live? I don't know what's going on. People are dying. They want to know the cliffhanger. The internet's going crazy right now. Trying to find that's it's trending on Twitter. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, let's get where is uh, Nicholas I um, get trending on Twitter. <laughs> the king was just about to talk when one of the guards came in and said that a dragon had kidnapped pre-Dixon, otherwise known as Prince <laughs> Dixon, and taken him and taken him to Death Valley. <laughs> Pre-Dixon. <laughs> oh, poor Priya. Of it did. <laughs> Uh, a couple more. We've got to talk about survival here. Chapter 7. Meanwhile, or as I've spelt it, men-while, the fuzzy thing... <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, the fuzzy thing was wriggling around when the big... D- <laughs> what? <laughs> when... Oh, God, Gerard's even counting the chapters that it was dropping out on. <laughs> He's invested in the story. Hang on, let's see what's going on. Okay, am I back now? Did I press the right button? Can people hear me? Hello? Everyone's hanging out right now for what's happening. You guys missed some classic chapters. You missed all, you missed everything. Please, somebody tell me that they can hear me right now. I want the spin off of the I'm back. All right, quickly, for Catherine and Gerard, just really quickly, I'm going to read over this because I only want to read a couple more to talk about Survivor. Okay, so back to where we cut off. Chapter 5. When she walked to the gate, the guards were shocked because P.R. Karen had the suit of Sir Nicholas I. They bowed at P.R. Karen and let her in. Good for them. Uh, Chapter 6. When P.R. Karen walked in to see the king, the king was so amazed because Sir Nicholas I hadn't been seen in a hundred years and as, <laughs> as we as, you would be shocked if you hadn't seen someone in a hundred years again they assume like how old they is the never... fucking king <laughs> yeah I remember when Sir Nicholas was just a young boy and why do they need to call him the first like am I Ben Waterworth the first am I expecting more of me to come out well, after does that mean there's Sir Nicholas the second so he's old enough to have kids <laughs> plus a hundred so he's at least a hundred and forty <laughs> Uh, the king was just about to talk when one of the guards came in and said that a dragon had kidnapped pre-Dixon, Prince Dixon, and taken him to Death Valley. Uh, <laughs> of course! All right, couple more here. Right, we're caught up now. Gerard and Catherine, they're caught up. Good. Chapter 7. Meanwhile, Catherine, can you mark my spelling down, please? The fuzzy thing was wriggling around when the big dragon ran into it. <laughs> <laughs> what fuzzy thing? <laughs> the fuzzy thing that took a nose, Noah. Keep with the story. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it's been a week, but come on. Uh, <laughs> the dragon was angry, so he ate the fuzzy thing. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to chapter 10, and then we'll leave it on a cliffhanger. Chapter 8. The king sent P.R. Karen to slay the dragon, but P.R. Karen took the helmet off and showed her real face. Da, da, da. <laughs> Chapter 9. The king was absolutely shocked because she had no nose. <laughs> Why is so superficial in this kingdom? It's not, not, <laughs> it's not a very friendly um, story for burn victims, is it, Ben? <laughs> Like, like, oh, I'm not shocked with the fact that you're not really a guy we haven't seen in a hundred years. It's the fact, oh shit, you've got no nose. You can't fight a dragon, you don't have a nose. Discriminating against people without noses. Um, and also because she had the suit of Sir Nicholas the First. <laughs> we'll establish that. Where on earth did you get the suit, he said. Um, like, it was just outside, did we not just say that before? <laughs> <laughs> the suit was literally outside the front doors of the castle. <laughs> so, these people don't have eyes. Cha- she doesn't have a nose. Chapter 10. I start ch- I'll go to chapter 11, because chapter 11 is the last one on the page, and I remember we're up to next week. Chapter 10. I found it, she said. <laughs> wow, the king said. <laughs> this king's a dumb fuck. This king's called Alec. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> PR Karen said to the king that she must save Pre Dixon. Uh, chapter 11, I'll end it here. Pre Karen found a horse. She's good at finding things. She'd find idols, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and went back inside the castle. <laughs> and rode to Death Valley. Ooh. Oh, so they didn't even supply her a horse? They just, she <laughs> she, has, no, she has no own. nose. They're discriminating against her. Oh. Cheapskate castle. Next week on The Princess Who <laughs> Lost Her Nose, will pre- Dixon gets saved. I'll save it to next week. All right. Whoa, no, In I... a special two-hour edition of The Princess Who Lost Her Nose. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> um, okay, confessionals for this episode. Um, we just had an ad break there. Um, confessionals. Everybody got a confessional this episode except for Wesley. Um, most confessionals, Natalie and Reed got six apiece. Uh, John still leading on 33, Keith on 32. Interestingly that John on 33 still has less than Jeremy on 45 and Josh on 34. Um, Baylor on 21, Missy on 19, Natalie on 17, Reed nah. 16, Alec 13, and Jacqueline is on 11. Um, so that is that. Uh, where did we finish in our placings? Uh, you're all asking. On the ranking side of things, I said that Wes would be eighth. Noah said that Wes That's would be eighth. Troy Zan oh. said Wes would be eighth. We all get a point. So. Oh, you're talking about power rankings. Power rankings, yeah. Tr- oh. Troy Zan is on eight. I'm on seven. Noah, you're on five. Sandra is on one. Um, <laughs> Minus 50. So the pre... See, oh, actually, the sweep. Can I just point out... Uh, bye-bye, Linda. Uh, thanks for coming. Linda stuffed up the pattern. Um, so... Oh, I loved that pattern. It was supposed to be Jared. Jared! It's all your fault. Sorry, I wouldn't have minded anyway. Rossi, how are you feeling about Natalie this week? Oh, she's got her 20 back. She does. So she, it's looking up for her. She does, she does, she does. Uh, Marella, you're out, of course. Noah, yep. John, uh, any change this week on your feelings? He can win this game. He's getting a good edit. Go, John Mish. Mish. Um, and Jared, Alec, uh, you're just on borrowed time, really, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, it's so terrible. Hey, at least, like, he's the, probably the least threatening from the minorities, so. <laughs> Those minorities you got to look out for. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, Ben. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you insinuating? The minority alliances uh, you've got to look out for. Uh, so, um, where did we rank Wesley? All right, let's stretch this motherfucker out, shall we? Um, yes. Rossi. You said that he would be second, so you're out. Uh, Julian said he'd be the winner. <laughs> yep. Julian is definitely out. <laughs> I love that show. So remember, he's in ninth. He finished ninth. So you got to get closest to ninth. Okay, then. Um, Kate said he would be 13th. So she is the closest so far. Joppy said he would be 12th. He is the closest so far. Paul said he would be in 11th. Because Paul's leading at the moment. Uh, he is the closest so far. Jared, you said he would be in 11th. You are equal with Paul right now. I said he would be 6th. So I'm out. So that leaves Noah and Colin. Noah. First boot. You said he would be the first boot. So you're out. (laughs) Whatever. So, Jared, you're leading with Paul right now. You're two away. Colin said he would be... Ninth. He gets uh, it spot on. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Colin gets two points. Colin goes to the lead. Colin's on four. Paul is on three. Uh, Rossi, Kate, and Joppy are all on two. Julian, Jared, and myself are on one. Noah, how many are you on? 
seven <laughs> is incorrect. Isn't that what you said on the power? Minus rate? seven. <laughs> <laughs> you are on a big fat donut. Mm. Well, it's not a competition. <laughs> well, clearly it is. I might still win money, and no one else is winning money. Oh uh, yeah, Alex, second and third are. <laughs> uh, so who said who's going to be in eighth? I said John is going next. Mm, not really confident about that one. Um, Noah, you have got Reed going in at eight. You're in with a good shot there. It's very likely happen, and I Surely. can finally get it there. Surely you're in with a good shot there. <laughs> this is my week next week. Jared, you've got Natalie going at eight. <laughs> uh, ben, 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 sorry to interrupt you, but you need to tell the seventh as well. Oh, I do. Oh, I'll get back to that. Good, good point. Um, uh, Catherine, I think that was um, Wes who wanted the donut burger. I was going to bring that up, actually. Um, that was the other moment I forgot. Hamburger! Donut burger! <laughs> uh, Which, there is a shop in Hobart that sells donut burgers. Oh, which shop? Have one, and it was disgusting. Which shop? Uh, the Winston in town, the pub. Oh, North Hobart. Never fucking heard of the Winston. It's donut with, like, hamburger, bacon, cheese, and maple syrup all over it. And I felt like a disgusting, like, toilet bowl after eating it. So I do not recommend it. I've often and the Winston would not be um, sponsoring this podcast. I've often thought you look like a disgusting toilet bowl. So um, can I just point out... I, oh, donut I, burgers, uncle. I had a beef and bacon burger from McDonald's tonight. There are there are a few foods I'd have sex with. Actually, no, that's a lie. I'd have food, sex with lots of food. I, You'd have sex with McDonald's beef and bacon? Oh, like, have you not had one of them before? It's got beef uh-huh. and bacon on it. Like, <laughs> well, I'm too busy eating disgusting maple syrup donut burgers, obviously. McDonald's, a great restaurant. Sponsor us now. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling happy. I'm, oh, I'm loving it. I'm oh, McLovin' it. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm McLovin' this podcast. <laughs> isn't, he a char- by McDonald's. isn't he that character from Superbad, McLovin? Um, McLovin. Uh, ja- Jacqueline, you've got Jacqueline, Julian. You're not here, Julian. Um, eighth. Paul has got Nadia. Well, you're fucked. Uh, Rossi, you've got Natalie as well. Kate has got Kelly. Well, she's doing a go well there. Colin, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you've got Jacqueline and Joppy has got Alec. Seventh, I have got Baylor. Meh. Yeah. Noah, you have got Jacqueline. Oh, I could go two for two. Jared, you have got Drew. Hmm. Julian, you've got <laughs> Julie, you've got Jeremy. Hmm. Paul's got <laughs> Dale. Hmm. <laughs> Rossi has got Val. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Do I win by default next week, then? Because no one's ever got it. Kate's got Jeremy, Colin has got Nadia, and Joffy has yeah. got Josh. Yeah. Next week is my week. <laughs> um, all right, that's all that. Still, she's a, you probably won't get the points anyway. Yeah. No, probably not. Um, I think I think that's about it, unless you want more PR Karen. Uh, I would love an extra chapter, but we should probably leave it. No, it's 10 to midnight, guys. Come on. People are going to wake up and listen to The Brink, Edge Radio, 7 to 9 a.m. Um, hashtag for this episode and hashtag for this episode of Survivor Oz. Let's start with you, Jared. Um, for the episode of Survivor, it has to be uh, 58 Nuggets in 5... Hashtag 58 Nuggets in 5 Minutes. <laughs> And for the Oz Topsy, um, whew, how could you go past um, Rat is back? <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. Rat, Rat is, is back. back. <laughs> Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? <laughs> um, Nuggets Noah. Um, for the episode, there is oh so many, but I guess we go with. Uh, hashtag, uh, hashtag, I love that show, I guess, um, and for this episode, hashtag Dr. Nicholas Rape. <laughs> special stick. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Nicholas Rape and his special furry stick that he knocks people off. <laughs> Alex. 
Okay, let's go with a terrible pun for the episode. So we'll go with hashtag read it and weep. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's awful. Oh. I apologize. Um, and for the Oztopsy, we'll go hashtag Rossi didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Rossi, another Rossi. <laughs> uh, for this episode, hashtag Ben's here. And... For the episode of Survivor, that. That. What does he send? He sent he a YouTube link, which nobody... Well, so you're allowed to tour. <laughs> I'm open... Hashtag making bacon pancakes. People listening to, uh, watching this live are not going to hear this, um, but when you listen to this uh, back, I've got bacon pancakes original video. Um, what is this? What is this? A school for ants? <laughs> bacon pancakes, making bacon pancakes. What the fuck? Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. <laughs> bacon pancakes. People watch this live have no idea what's bacon going on right pancake. now. Bacon pancakes, Can I just make a statement pan- that bacon Good job, pancakes, Mr. bacon pancakes with maple syrup is the best food ever invented, ever, and. People dismiss it so easily, but I suggest you all go out and try it because you will not regret it. Can I just? It's like a taste you've never tasted before. Can I just point out that vegetarians are stupid because they don't eat bacon? Oh. <laughs> like, Ben, stop alienating our um, vegetarian listeners. But good job at getting the bacon listeners in. So. Hey, I, I, I <laughs> you win some, you lose some. I want to officially announce that I am officially ordained in the Church of Bacon. And you think I'm joking, but I am not. I am waiting for them. You get it? I well, they're about to. Se- they sent me an email with my certificate, but the, certif- the link wouldn't work, so I had to email them. And they said, "Oh, we are very sorry. Tell us your title, and we will resend it." And I'm in the process Typical of Church of Bacon link not working. I, I, I'm in the process of organising an interview with the head of the Church of Bacon. And if people <laughs> think I'm joking, this is a legitimate thing. Google the United Church. Oh, hello, Can Bert. you please ask him about bacon and maple syrup with pancakes? Because I love them. I will. But uh, there's United Church of Bacon. So when I get this certificate, I can officially marry people. I'm totally like Jeff Probst. So I could I could get on this podcast and I could just marry two of you together. Kristen and Noah could be on a podcast together. Do, do we not get a choice? You just like... <laughs> You are now married. I could totally do that by the power invested me in the United Church of Bacon. Noah, you are now married to Kristen. <laughs> what? He wasn't even here. <laughs> ah, typical Ben marrying people off. You're an ass. That wasn't <laughs> me, by the way. That was my Kristen imp. <laughs> well, um, I've been called an ass about five times today. She, ass. Uh, she, I, I don't know if she's listening to these again, but she, she actually was going to join us this week, but it's Thanksgiving. Um, but she apparently is going to be with us next week. So there you go. But um, she somebody tweeted out something about salad dressing, and she tweeted out saying like, "What the hell is that?" And I'm like, "You don't know what salad, salad dressing? dressing is?" She's like, "No, I know what that is. I'm not stupid. I'm talking about salad dressing in a bag." And I'm like, "I would hashtag calm down." And she's like, "You're an ass." <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Kristen. You know what you should do? You should marry Linda and Steve off. Mm. Survivor on the I was about to say, well, what about me? I've been engaged long. I've been engaged for four yeah, years now. you're never getting married. You've been engaged for 20 years. Four years officially. I just caught a fly. Yeah, it's a of um, <laughs> thank you to everybody. I am a meat collector, Catherine. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you to all our homie Gs who listened tonight. Uh, <laughs> appreciate it. That's um, Baylor's hip-hop album. <laughs> Sticky homie G. <laughs> Homie G, Sticky C's. Oh, goodness me. Featuring all my fellow snarkies. Uh, sticky situation. <laughs> such an inflation. <laughs> um, all over the nation. <laughs> She's not Pitbull. She just doesn't get a random word and rhyme it with something else. She's not Pitbull. She's just really cool. I'm sitting at my desk. I'm going to flex. <laughs> with my Pippa! <laughs> Stop that now. Pippa! Sugar! <laughs> Yeah, I'll stop the rapping. We've jumped the shark, I think. <laughs> Fatty Esther featuring rap. Homie G. <laughs> Backseat Bogan. My name is Logan. <laughs> Magic. I like um, it. That's Lawson, not Logan. What am I talking about there, Alex? 
I don't know what on earth you're doing. Uh, I've just felt like doing magic. Uh, Rossi, thank you. Yeah. Shut up, Noah. Alex, thank you. Keep talking, Noah. Noah, thank you. Oh, this is just too much pressure. Sugar! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, someone needs to edit that. Um, John going sugar, and then just a massive ex- napalm explosion <laughs> edited right up to that clip. <laughs> so we've got that, and you entering the room. <laughs> so someone who's good with video stuff, do those Jimmy! Stuff. Jimmy! <laughs> Jimmy, do the sugar explosion, and Ben does a sugar explosion with the girl. It'll just have lots of steel images in it. Um, <laughs> oh, and Tim Tam. <laughs> and hot women. <laughs> That's Jimmy's wife. <laughs> Purple Kelly. <laughs> Jared, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Catherine, can you please, instead of showing your class survivors, show them the Oztopsy? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Dear students, You'll get this, fired. this is what I watch late on a Thursday night. <laughs> Uh, Catherine, can we suggest a psychologist for you? I don't know why you're staying up listening to this terrible... <laughs> hey, hey, if she was a teacher in Tasmania today, she would have been home today, so that's okay. Um, Although I did see that comment on the wall and pro- major prop to you, Catherine. Yes, good job, Catherine. None of my teachers showed me Survivor. <laughs> yeah. uh, Survivor so. If I, somebody, yeah, exactly, if somebody showed me Survivor in class, like, I don't even, I can't remember any <laughs> teacher referencing Survivor. I got very excited one day because one of my... I had it in one of my books, actually. You... It was my English book. No, oh, good. For yeah, it was in one of my textbooks. I I remember writing in my homework diary every week during Borneo, who was going home. I was thirteen, so whatever. Um, Catherine, um, when they're being naughty, lunchtime detention. We're watching Redemption Island. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we're listening. I'll be good. I swear. We're listening to Sticky Situation on a loop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be good. I swear. We're going to close it out with the Jeffisons remix. Um, to everybody who listened, thank you. Remember Survivors dot com. You can find all. All previous Oz Topsies there. Our recap this week is with the Herpes of Survivor Oz, Billy Garcia. And he said that himself. Willie LaShawn. He said, <laughs> Willie LaShawn. He's like... <laughs> <Hashtag> in joke. <laughs> Ah, I'm Willie LaShawn. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Rita Verios. So uh, Billy and Rita uh, are doing it. Re-re- are doing it this week, and they're also doing the Ostopsy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's too late. <laughs> Uh, Willie LaShawn! Is that, is that going to be um, broadcast live? Billy and Rita doing it? No, I, or, that just your, or are you just recording? I will be marrying them at the same time. <laughs> By the power of me in the Church of Bacon. <laughs> um, so you too, I'll see you. Get your questions in for them. <laughs> Ask them how they're going to do it. Power 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 rankings will be up um, next week as well. If, if you want to um, have any tips for the princess who lost her nose too, um, <laughs> tweet them in to us. Um, yes, and um, shameless plug for Noah, the Amazing Race Oz. Uh, we recorded that on the weekend, of course. Big Brother Oz is over with. Um, but we, you can download the last episode today. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and it also, questions for Wes. I actually have already gotten a question in for Wes already. Somebody's emailed me one already, so they're keen to talk to Wes. Uh, Wesley. Um, get them in, because we'll have our exit interview with him next week. But as we close out to the Jeffisms remix, to all our homie G's out there, Snarkies, remember, you've got to risk it to get the biscuit. Fire represents your life when your fire's gone, and so are you. Fire represents your life. Travis, 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 Travis spoken. Grab, grab your stuff, grab your stuff, grab, grab your stuff, head back to camp. Grab your stuff, head back to camp. Good night. Seems like I'm always saying the same thing.